witness strange sights and hear strange sounds, but you will not believe. This is the New England Ghost Project. Welcome to the Nightmare. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ghost Chronicles Next Generation. And we are broadcasting live right here in America's Stonehenge. America's Stonehenge. Right in not. back of us. Right. Because it'd be magic. Who knew? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yep. there's no bugs. That's the miracle. That's the miracle. Chipmunk! There's no... <laughs> Whatever. Those chipmunks. They're everywhere. Yeah. So everywhere. anyways, we are here, and this is... Uh, uh, the, the background behind us, of course, is what? The, you took this picture? Uh, yes, we recently uh, took a little, uh, little day trip up to America's Stonehenge in Salem, New Hampshire. And um, this, this lovely background is indeed a picture that I took. Um, right. Anne likes to point it out when she <laughs> takes pictures. Even if they're my pictures, she still likes to create credit for them. Anyway. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, Why not? Whatever. Why not? So anyway, speaking about taking credits for stuff, uh, while we were up there, uh, you, of course, dragged me to another oh, cemetery, yes. right? Right. Yep. Right. I dragged you. Yep. Dragged I me. dragged you. I don't, I don't, I think you went voluntarily. Voluntary. It was. What was it? What kind of cemetery tripping? What was it? Consensual? Consensual. Consensual cemetery, cemetery tripping. tripping. Mm. <laughs> So you say. <laughs> anyway, so we, we have, uh, of course, we can't have any Ghost Chronicles Next Generation show without our cemetery tripping. So, uh, Russ, can we play our little cemetery tripping that Ian devoted so much time to? Welcome to Cemetery Tripping, where I will feature a different cemetery in each episode that I hope you will seek out and enjoy as much as I do. As an avid taphophile, or lover of tombstones, I spend a lot of time in the local New England area in the beautiful and historic cemeteries we have here. The stones here are like no others, and I have literally thousands of pictures of the intricate and symbolic carvings found on them. You can see my pictures on Facebook by doing a search for Cemetery Tripping. Today I would like to bring you to Salem Center Burying Ground in Salem, New Hampshire, located just a short drive away from America's Stonehenge. This lovely cemetery dating from the 1700s is located just behind the grandstand on the town common and adjacent to the historic town hall. This cemetery is a wonderful example of all the things I look for in my graveyard travels, containing many markers well over six feet tall as well as Victorian and Puritan style carvings. There is a memorial created from a mill's grinding wheel dedicated to the veterans buried there, as well as nice samples of carvings which are gender specific, such as the cuffs on the stones of this married couple, one in a masculine style and one feminine. There is also a fantastic row of family crypts near a large area of veterans graves which bear heartfelt mementos from family members. It also contains great examples of varied carvings of death's head and soul effigies, along with the typical willow and urn motifs that were popular during the Victorian era. There is also the grave of Captain James Jones, a soldier of the Revolutionary War who served at Valley Forge. You might want to bring along a picnic for this visit, as this is indeed a very pleasant spot for visiting, located next to a babbling brook and an old mill. Hey. Oh. <laughs> hey, we're back. Oh, yeah. We have to have, um, we're a little short staffed this evening, so right. we've got our chat well, of room. Because we're out in the middle of oh, the yep. woods, right? Yep. Yep. We're out in the middle of the woods. We're out so in the middle of the woods. We've got our little table set up. Yeah. <laughs> our little so laptop. We're, uh, we're all set up. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask us in chat, yes, we'll see you right here. Right. And apparently... In Para X, I'm uh, Boney Maroney. I don't know. I, maybe I missed something. <laughs> but you at any rate. You should miss something anyways. So we're here tonight right. to talk about our visit 
To America to Stonehenge. America Stonehenge. Because, right? Stonehenge. you know, I've been there a few times, and uh, Ann and I went on a day trip, as we do sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, we'd like to do more of them, actually, do, do more shows on day trips. Yes. Course, yeah. We so. like to go out and get in trouble. <laughs> Well, that's, that's not quite that's, what I remember, but that's all right. Mostly what yeah. we like to do, yeah. but anyways. Uh, it always happens, but whatever. So, Ron. Yeah. Um, I know people are wondering, some people may not know what America's Stonehenge is. Right. Um, but maybe we should go to our opening clip. So, actually, that's not a bad idea, Ed. Okay. So, anyways, this is the opening clip we shot uh, on our day trip to America's Stony Hedge. So can we play that? The opening clip. So here we are at America's Stonehenge in Salem, New Hampshire. And we're exploring, up to no good as usual. Uh, but what kind of stories, yes, there's lots of mosquitoes too. What kind of stories are we uh, looking into today? Well, you know I stayed here on the main site overnight. Wow. Yeah, Neat. That, that was scary. <laughs> and there were some strange things that happened. And we're going to talk about those a little later on. You might even experience it. Who knows? I hope so. But we're going to try to contact whoever's here. Absolutely. Right. I plan to uh, sacrifice Ann. <laughs> <laughs> Unless the mosquitoes carry me off first. Well, so that might be the sacrifice. That might happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There you go. We'll check in with you later. So we're standing in front of the well of lost souls, as I like to call it. And, well, it's a well of unknown age. Okay. All right. And the, the story is behind it, and this may go back to ancient times, mm -hmm. is that people walking by, would be, souls would be sucked out and into the well. Ah, that would For, explain why there's like a fence over it. Right, it's a <laughs> fence out to, to protect us. And I understand that totally. Right. So while we're here, we might as well take the K2 meter out and see if the Well oh. of Lost Souls. All right. Uh, OK, two meter. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, great K2 great meter. K2 meter. <laughs> it's got one light. Does that mean something? One light. It means the K2 is turned on. There you go. So you saw it. <laughs> the K2 was turned on. <laughs> and that's our adventure here at the Well of Lost, lost souls. souls. Can we say that together? The Well, well of, of Lost, lost Souls. souls. Well, there we were. We survived the uh, well of lost souls. The well of lost souls. Well of lost souls. Right? I don't know if it really still explains what Stonehenge is. It doesn't. <laughs> no. Really. Stonehenge. Now everybody's heard of uh, the Stonehenge in England. Yeah. Right? The one that copied us. That copied us. No one's really sure of the significance of it. How it ended up there? It's the oldest megalith site in America. It's uh, 4,000 years old. Some mm -hmm. of the stones have. Uh, but nobody knows who built it and who uh, actually uh, inhabited it mm -hmm. at the time because they, would, they believed that there were people living around it, if anything. Right. And there, there are many phases of it. I mean, we have things like the sacrificial altar, the uh, watch house, the uh, Oh, some of those, the East-West Burial Chamber. Mm -hmm. Actually, you got the list there of a yes. bunch of them. Yes. The Astronomical Observatory, <laughs> right? The Astronomical Viewing Platform, yeah. which I think is really interesting. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Why don't we talk about it right now? You know? Well, I think that we ran into a person when we were there. Oh, you want to play him? Um, sure. We just happen to be, they also have an alpaca. <laughs> <laughs> an alpaca That's uh, embarrassing. habitat, an alpaca habitat yeah. there. And uh, on this particular day, apparently the alpacas had been shaved. Hmm. And there is nothing funnier looking than a naked alpaca. So we went over to laugh at the alpacas for a while. Stop that, I am not. What? <laughs> and we just happened to run into who but... Dennis Stone, who is the owner of America Stonehenge, and I met him many, many years ago when I first did my, one of my first investigations there. We were able to stay overnight, so mm -hmm. awesome. uh, we, have a, we have a little interview that we did with him, so why don't we play that now? Yes. We're here at America Stonehenge, uh, formerly known as Mystery Hill back 100 years ago, <laughs> and I was walking and I heard the voice, and this is a voice I heard 10 years ago, 
Mr. Dennis Stone. Hi, hi, Ron. Good to see you again. Welcome to our site. Welcome back. So there's a lot of uh, activity that's been happening here, new finds? A few new finds, yeah. I mean, it's always ongoing since the 1930s, but in the last couple of years, we found a couple more quarry sites where these big slabs that are used for roof slabs, wall slabs, standing stones, like the sacrificial table. Uh, these stones have been found all over the hilltop. Some were known in the 1970s, but recently my son was out there doing some more clearing, and, and uh, he came upon about maybe another dozen of these big slabs. Some of them weigh up to about 10 tons, and they're oh, wow. actually removed from the bedrock, propped up uh, with another stone. And it was kind of interesting, uh, what happened to the people that built this site? Where did they go? But also, with this much stonework going on, what were they planning on building up here, you know? Exactly. So it was like a work in progress that all of a sudden came to a halt, and they walked away from it. So it became a little bit bigger mystery that they had bigger plans for the for this site, and they never completed it, you know? Mm -hmm. And why? That was that really, uh, you know, was a big question in our mind once we found all of these. And this was just recently on a, a TV show, right? Yeah, it's been on several TV shows. The most recent was uh, Scott Walter's show. Oh, great America show. on Earth, yeah, History 2, and it's been on History. And his show ran for three seasons. He's got something else in the works. But uh, uh, a lot of people aren't aware of these sites, even our site. But there are sites all over the Northeast. They number somewhere around seven to 800 of these stone sites most people have never heard of. So Scott shows great, and, and he covers most of North America, but uh, and there are sites all over North America I'm still becoming aware of. When you watch a show like his, you may agree or disagree with some of the ideas that he has, um, but uh, people just don't know these things even exist, you know? Uh, inscriptions, structures, you know, all sorts of mounds and everything that uh, most of us aren't familiar with, you know? So, um, uh, from Star Trek, we had William Shatner do a show. It was called Weird or What? And that was on uh, about three or four years ago. Really? And if you go back to the 70s, um, Leonard Nimoy, of course, did In Search of him. You're on history. He had both Spock and Kirk do shows on us. And even earlier, we had Rod Sterling back in 1970 uh, from the Twilight Zone and from the uh, Night Gallery, you know. But oh, wow. He did a show on us, too, which is kind of neat. Uh, so there have been different shows over the years. And so Scott is the most recent. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you have owned this site for a long time now. Actually, 60 years ago, my dad became aware of this from WBZ Radio, a uh, talk show called uh, Yankee Yarns. Alton Hall Blackington was the, was the host that evening, and they're talking all about the site. And he had never heard of it. My dad only lived about eight miles away. And right after that, he went to a barber shop. He was waiting to have his hair cut, saw our magazine, New Hampshire Profile magazine, and in it's this site again. So he heard it on the radio, saw it in the magazine, asked the barber if he could keep the magazine. It was actually three years old. It was in 1952. Oh, wow. Sitting in the barber shop for three years, I guess that happens. Yeah. And he said, sure, I'll take it. So they went, uh, took it home with them, and the following weekend they were at a poker game. My aunt and uncle, my mom and dad, and a few friends got together playing poker, and then my dad put this on the table uh, during a break and said, anybody ever heard of this? And my aunt and uncle had, oh yeah, we heard, oh yeah, we went there in the 1930s. We know about that place. We used to picnic up there. We rode our bikes down here from Derry, about 10 miles on bicycles. Went up there, and like many people did, and they sat on the rocks and had their picnic lunch, and then they went home and did it again a few more times. It was an unofficial picnic area since the 1800s, so a lot of people heard about us. So my, it's been 60 years that my dad, this year, probably around this time, first saw the site. Mm -hmm. And he opened it up to the public in 1958, and it was called Mystery Hill Caves, yep. And as, as you know. And then five years later, we changed it just to Mystery Hill, because caves kind of denoted underground chambers, you know, either in bedrock or cabins, and they were really man-made chambers, not natural, you know. And so the word caves was dropped. American Cave Magazine still put us in those artificial caves. So we've had it open for, um, you know, since 1958. So it's been quite a number of decades, yeah. And uh, the son is still involved in it? My son, Kelsey, yeah, he's an engineer now, uh, just like my dad was an engineer and my father-in-law was an engineer. So I guess engineering runs in the blood. And uh, my son is a mechanical engineer, and he races cars, too, with his kids he met at college and everything. So he's doing race car driving. He works full-time as an engineer, and he's involved with us on the side, just like we all were, you know. Mm -hmm. We all had full-time jobs, and we run this because we love the place, and it's a passion with us. Well, I see the rain guards are starting to... Uh, well, you did the rain move. dance a few minutes ago. I saw you. So, yeah, you're going to bring more rain, just like we had so yesterday. It was if a washout. somebody wanted to come and see this, uh, what's the website for Yeah, it's uh, StonehengeUSA.com. There's an email address in there, and there's a phone number. So if anybody wants to give us a call or just drop us an email. But it's StonehengeUSA.com. Uh, and there's pictures, and there's uh, different activities. Like great. The summer solstice, we just had that. Ian and I just did the tour, and it's, it's awesome. It's a self-guided tour, and it's, it's a yep. blast. You know, it really is. Well, I hope so, everybody comes yeah, down to see Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, that was my old friend Dennis Stone. He was actually uh, there the whole night.
mm -hmm. with us. So uh, he provided us a lot of information, which we're going to talk a little about, hopefully, if we have enough time tonight. If not, we'll do another show on it as well. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started investigating, one of the first shows I did was an American an investigation and show, was at American uh, Stonehenge. And um, ATT3, which is like the, at that time was the CNN because ATT, T was involved more than uh, uh, media or Comcast or whatever it is now. Mm -hmm. And they actually came with us and they did some recording as well. But it was funny. Do you remember the Blair Witch? Yes. So they did, they did yeah. a little bits in it, like a, a, a spoof on the Blair Witch as well. So oh, it was kind of really? funny. Wow. But it, it, it was an interesting night. I mean, there were a lot of people there. I had my crew. Plus, um, uh, Professor McLeod from the University of Lowell was there. He was a Native American, also doing a lot of work on the archaeological site itself. Uh, also, Brian the Monk. Uh, Brian the Monk. Brian the Monk came. <laughs> uh, he is a Franciscan monk and is one of the, the first persons I got involved with in the uh, paranormal. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was there as well. And uh, it, it, was, it was pretty good. It was, it was interesting. We had some strange things happen to us that night as well. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, uh, while we were there, uh, we interviewed Dawn, who was a longtime employee okay. of the, uh, the uh, site. So uh, I think we have an interview of Dawn. And this is old footage for those who are seeing the video. So, yes. <laughs> y you know, it, it's kind of... A little scratchy. A little scratchy, <laughs> but it, it's original footage. We call it the lost footage of My Mystery Hill. <laughs> so can we play the footage of uh, Russ? And can you tell if there were any uh, strange occurrences here? Um, well, a couple of years ago, we had a woman come in. Uh, she actually returned a stone to us, which we thought was weird, until we heard the story behind it. Uh, she took one of the stones from here, brought it home, and I guess her and her mother were sitting in their living room and all of a sudden a 10-foot Indian appeared. So the woman thought that the stone was evil and brought it back to us the next day. She actually brought the stone back? She brought the stone back because she did not want that in her house anymore and she didn't want any more 10-foot Indians to appear. She was dead serious? Dead serious. This lady was a nervous wreck because of this stone. Okay, uh, any other strange occurrences? Um, well, a previous employee we had here before was closing up um, one night. Actually, I think it happened a couple times. Uh, they looked down in the parking lot, and there's a big stone down there. And what they thought was they saw the um, stone actually turn into an old woman and start walking across the parking lot. And um, some of the books that we've had in our bookstore here before have talked about the shapeshifters, where, uh, you know, people or people would turn into different animals or different things and kind of what we thought it might have been. Okay. So that's pretty crazy. Yeah. That's pretty crazy stuff. Well, the interesting thing about it, as, as I mentioned, uh, I have some of the old footage and they, she talked about the shapeshifter right. where, where a stone in the parking lot would actually turn into this old woman and she would walk across. And this was seen more than once. Mm -hmm. All right. So while we were there, we went and film the stone. And the interesting thing about it, if you look at the stone, and there's a limestone-like stain in the stone, but the limestone stain looks like an Indian. Wow. It's so bizarre. It was like, we were like shocked when we, we saw it. It was like, mm -hmm. oh my God, mm -hmm. you see that? Oh, it can't be. It's like, yeah, it was, uh, it looks like an Indian. So, I mean, this was an Indian le legend of the shapeshifter who turns from uh, one thing to another. So it was kind of interesting. That is pretty, pretty unusual yeah. to, to say that a stone turned into right. well, there were, an th old woman. Through, through the years, I mean, I'm there saying. are there are many, many, <laughs> many, uh, many cases or, or legends of, mm -hmm. of shape shifting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we know, actually, when we were there, yeah. we both uh, walked over, Ron showed me that exact rock yeah showed you the rock that they were actually talking about um it looked pretty ordinary to me mm -hmm. but i also wasn't there how many years ago when uh that was a long time yeah, ago long i can't time remember ago when they were looking we at have the footage rock. though i mean so if if <laughs> if you had a super vhs we could have played it but uh, oh i'm so sorry it's not my fault no it's it's 2015 so yeah 
We don't have super VHS anymore, I'm sorry. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Back then it was all analog, that's, that's what it was. Right, and right. Kind of a thing, but anyway, chipmunk! <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> They're fast little buggers. Fast little we buggers. chase those around all day. We do have a couple of questions from chat. But yeah, and you were so fascinated with those chipmunks. I loved the chipmunks. The chipmunks were making me crazy because I kept I I was doing the videotaping and I kept trying to catch Videotape them. Videotape chipmunks. I, I, so anyways. So anyways, I'm supposed I, to be looking for ghosts, not chipmunks. I call one over so. and, and made them dance for her and <laughs> stuff like that. So she was happy. So. He did finally. Yep. So anyways. So we do have um, a couple of questions from the chat room. Mm -hmm. um, our good friend Stephen Scott. Hey, Steve. Staying up late in Scotland, listening to our show. He um, wanted to know, uh, have they ever found remains or evidence of habitation in and around the site? And um, I think maybe Dennis Stone might have addressed that a little bit mm -hmm. um, in what he talked about. But right. yes, they have. Um, and he also asked about the name Mystery Hill, right? Yes, yeah. and, and wanted to know um, why it was called Mystery Hill. Right. Um, and, and originally, when the property was first purchased mm -hmm. um, by, I have the name right here. Of course I, you do. <laughs> put your glasses on. You might be able to read I'm not putting my glasses on. <laughs> okay, fine. All right, it's not on you now. You can do it. The camera's not on you. But it's, back, it's, <laughs> back, all right. Okay, don't do this to me, Russ. Okay, stay over there on Ron. Okay, in 1958, it was open to the public under the name Mystery Hill Caves. Okay, mm -hmm. you can come back to me now. I took my glasses off. Uh, give on. us a two shot. <laughs> give us a two shot because we're talking anyways. There you go. Um, uh, so, yeah. And it was a public attraction, mm -hmm. okay? It had been purchased by a, a person who was researching, um, and they, you know, were starting to look to, into everything there. Right. So that, how, that is how it was. It was an attraction. It was entertainment. Um, and people would go there, and I think they would look... Um, I don't, it, there's not exactly caves there. No. I mean... Well, that's why they changed it to Mystery Hill. They yeah, got rid of the name. And, and he, he, addressed, he addressed that in his interview. Right. But the, the thing about Mystery Hill is, is nobody really knows about it, know who would live there. I mean, there are many theories. Uh, some believe it was Native Americans. Other people believe it was uh, the Phoenicians were Phoenicians, there. Yeah. Uh, there were even, uh, you know, reports of uh, the Irish monks. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a famous Irish monk whose name I can't recall at this time, but he, he supposedly led expeditions to the New World. And uh, it, the interesting thing about that is that when Brian the monk was there, um, he had a vision of a line of monks going up the hill in a procession uh, chanting, wow. uh, which was kind of interesting. So uh, uh, that was what was there, that first investigation. Mm -hmm. So. Anyways, we did some investigating of our own. <laughs> so why don't we kick off Such our why don't we kick off our investigation with our intro to uh, what's it called? What do we call it? Let's hello Stonehenge. <laughs> yes, the, hello Stonehenge. Can hello we? Hello Stonehenge. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Let's so look we'll at kick that. off our investigation now. We're here at uh, America Stonehenge in Salem, uh, New, Hampshire. New Hampshire. Right. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say Massachusetts. New, New Hampshire. Hampshire. Chipmunk! Chipmunk! <laughs> Anyways, um, we're here to do an investigation for our show, Ghost Chronicles Next Generation. Yes, we are. Which is really exciting, right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, what do you think we ought to do? I definitely think we should try and speak to the spirits. Ooh, speak to the spirits. Why don't we try that? Okay. Ready? Yep. Hello, Hello Stonehenge, my old friend. We've, We've come, come to speak, speak with you again. Yep, what that was we it. <laughs> we had a problem with uh, uh, keeping a serious mind with this investigation. You know, a it just bit. wouldn't be us yep. unless we were out there being silly. But we did have our K2 so. meter. We, we had scientific instruments with us, right? The K2 meter. Yes. Yes, yes. yes that very scientific instrument. Scientific instrument. That's right. And, and so we, we did some heavy <laughs> investigation. But one of the cool things about this, this site, and, and a lot of people don't even know what the purpose of the site was, but uh, there is the astronomical, astronomical observatory there. And yes, yes. So you have a little blip there. You want to tell us a little bit about the uh, astronomical observatory? <laughs> the astronomical observatory 
Okay. And yeah, go ahead, Russ. You can put the camera on me with my glasses on. I got my old lady glasses on. There you go. It happens to us all, folks, right? Okay. So um, it is a viewing platform. And what we did observe when we were there is that there are, there have been trees cleared um, to align with compass compass points or, or viewing lines, yeah. uh, viewing lines of the stars. Um, and there's a marker uh, in the middle of the clearing um, to align with certain, certain. Yeah, there's stones. There's certain yeah. stones that were placed there years ago. And um, there are, they, according to certain seasons of the year, the equinox, like the autumnal yep. equinox, say that mm -hmm. five times fast, autumnal. <laughs> Autumnal? Autumnal. Whatever. Autumnal. Yeah, okay. Okay. But um, from the platform, platform, which was constructed in 1975, mm -hmm. one can view the major astronomical alignment stones, including those stones for a true north alignment and the summer and winter solstice, sunrise, and sunset. The winter sunrise monolith, which has now fallen, I believe, Mm -hmm. uh, and the true south pointing wall um, are two of the things that are uh, provided there. Um, and I mean, originally, this whole area had been excavated um, when they were looking for ruins uh, when they first purchased the property. So those viewing, those viewing stones are, you know, have been added. Mm -hmm. And kind of one of the mysteries about this whole site is what was there and what was brought in, what was constructed, what was built. Right, because they took some of the stones for like uh, their houses and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it, you know, it's, there's a lot of different chambers there. It's really interesting, but we don't know how long they've been there mm -hmm. and, and if those were originally configurations. Uh, but there, there are some really, really cool places there. Especially the main one. What's the main one called uh, on that place? And you've got the little... The main site? Yeah, the, you know the big chamber that we went in? Uh, uh, it should be right up in here. <laughs> yeah, you go up in here. Let me, let me take a look at All that. All right, yeah. you take a gander on. Yeah, okay. So anyways, I mean, there are a lot of different ones here, and, and, and I want to talk about a couple of them. For instance, the... Uh, the uh, east-west chamber, it's a three-section chamber mm -hmm. uh, similar to ones found in uh, Europe. Uh, so, right. and the, the oracle chamber, that's the one I was trying to think about. The oracle chamber. Yeah, the oracle chamber. Now, the oracle chamber is a big, long chamber. It's like the T-shaped one you and I went in. Yep. Yeah. In fact, I think we have some footage of that, right? We do. We so, do. do we have that footage to, that we can play uh, that? That is uh, number six inside the cave. Yeah, inside the cave. Inside so, the cave. this is inside the oracle chamber. Hey, you want a piece of Stonehenge? Uh, quick, quick, put it back. Actually, the spirits will follow us home. Remind me. That's one of the, the pieces that I have. Well, somebody who took something. Oh, yeah. yeah. From here. Yeah, it was from here. Yeah. Right? The yeah. woman took it home and the Indian and uh, Indian yeah, Native right. American yeah, yeah. started haunting her dreams. No, this one actually showed up. Oh, right. In their living room. Wow. Then I'm not taking home any uh, rocks oh, yeah. from Stonehenge. I, just, I found a penny. Did you? Here? Oh yeah. Are you kidding me? Oh. That's huge. So, so Ann, wait, seriously, you just found a penny on the floor. I just found a penny. <laughs> the, the the things down here. <laughs> yes, I just found a penny. Oh, you found a penny. <laughs> <laughs> right on the floor of America's Stonehenge. Right. What does that mean? That means if you take it home, you'll be haunted. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my penny. <laughs> Who's going to steal my penny? Uh. But anyways, that's the Oracle Chamber. You can see that. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that as well. But uh, the interesting thing is that penny. Now, here we are in the middle of the woods and, and whatever, and, and you find a penny. Mm -hmm. And that's been a, a theme with you lately, haven't you, for the yeah. last year or so or yeah. whatever? Yeah. Um, the, whole, the whole thing with the penny, um, and I think a lot of long-time 
viewers of our show uh, know that we lost a very uh, wonderful crew member uh, a little over a year ago. Um, so our, our friend Tootsie, Emily Tootsie Emily. Miller. Um, and throughout the past year, and it usually happens, usually the night that we're having our show, I am bound to find a penny somewhere. Um, and I would like to think, you know, it is my hope and my belief that that's Emily saying hi. And she's a permanent crew member here. Mm -hmm. You have to watch our credits in the end. She's always there. She's always here in yeah. spirit. And, and that's the way member. we feel now when we do our show. We yes. always yeah. feel her presence here yeah. with so, us. Uh, so it was just odd that we found, I found a penny in the mud in this particular chamber that we were in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so hey, Emily. Uh, but it's just one of those things that seems to uh, follow me around a lot. Yeah. So hey, I like it. And I think that's. That's my belief. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we miss you. Yes, we do miss her. Yeah. We miss her a lot. So, anyways, going back to the Oracle Chamber. Yes. Uh, it's a, a really interesting chamber. They've they've they found uh, a petroglyph in there that goes back, you know, thousands of years. Mm -hmm. uh, they found other things, but in the chamber itself, it also has a uh, speaking tube, yes. which is kind of interesting. Yeah. And the speaking tube. Uh, goes up if you talk into it the voice comes up underneath the sacrificial altar the sacrificial altar right, right which yeah. is uh up there so i think we have a piece on the sacrificial altar so why don't we play that piece yes on the sacrificial altar oh here we are at the uh sacrificial altar you know what they did here no what they uh sacrificed virgins yes safe. <laughs> Slightly. So th there's, a, there's the little gooey thing. Very awesome. And uh, used to drain off over there. Ew. <laughs> well, we don't know what was there, but well, anyways. They could sacrifice animals, too. Uh -huh. Not just people. Right, so we should put a K2 meter on it. Okay. See if there any... I see that it's on again. There you go. I don't see it doing anything though. But if it does, I sacrificed this. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, look at that. It's broken. <laughs> okay. So evidently there's no... No spirit activity according to our K2. I don't know, you feel anything in general? I don't know, you want to douse? We could douse. Go ahead. Is there anybody here who would like to speak to us and today? I'll put the sacrificial fire. My pendulum says yes. Really? Yes. Were you a victim of a sacrifice on this altar? No. I'm being given the answer, no. Were you one of the people who performed the sacrificial ritual? Yes. Just checking. Were you a Native American? No. <gasps> Who is it? What are the other... Um, Phoenicians. The, the Phoenicians. Would you be a Phoenician? I am getting yes. Really? Are you blind? No. Okay, just want to make sure Why it wasn't a Phoenician blind. Uh... Do the spirits think Ron is funny? Yes. Oh, really? Damn. <laughs> you lose. Are we good? I think we're good. Thank you, great spirits. <laughs> Thank you, spirits. We appreciate your answers. Okay, that was the uh, sacrificial altar. Um, yeah, as you can see, we're, I had my K2 meter out there. We were doing dowsing. We were right on the serious investigating. All over. Yes, we're all over. Seriously investigating. Right. 
Yeah, we uh, even employed a chipmunk to check out uh, <laughs> under the altar for us uh, to uh, see if it was okay. And he reported back there were no spirits under the altar. That's, so, that's yeah. absolutely right. So anyways, that was the sacrificial altar. And as you saw, it was a big stone with a groove in it. And it almost had like a drain on it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, there have never been traces of a, a blood found in it, but of course it's thousands of years old, right. or at least hundreds of years old. So, um, one of them. what's that? One of them. One of what? <laughs> thousands, hundreds. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> picky now. Wow. Picky, picky. So, anyways, um, the 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 oracle tube we talked about. Uh, if you speak in it in the in the oracle chamber, the voice comes up under the altar. So it seems like it was part of some type of religious ceremony. Yeah. Now, do we know that it was for human sacrifice? No. I mean, it could have been for animal sacrifice. Could have been just for uh, you know maybe they just cleaned animals and you know let the blood drain off when they could they be. yeah. So I mean, we don't know. Uh, there are all tons and tons of theories. And uh, that's the, the mystery of Mystery Hill, is, is there, there is so, many, so much we don't know about it, so much more than we know about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is a very, very cool site, and it's definitely worth the trip to, to check out. Um, there are other great um, chambers there, like the Watchtower, which we'd shot in the, I think in the, we were sitting in front that of the- That was in the very beginning. The very beginning. Yeah. Now, the Watch House, the Watch, uh, the Watch House. Watch House, I that's the name of Yeah, the Watch House. Which is actually, actually is a little cave. And you could go down into it. Uh, we had footage, but we didn't use it. <laughs> it was just not exciting footage, so right. we didn't use it. No. But um, Lots of spiders in it. it yeah. <laughs> but it is a really deep chamber, and they do think that that is because it's way below uh, the actual site of Stonehenge that it was used as kind of a watch area. In reality, uh, we, we thought uh, we have some different theories on that. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor McLeod from the University of Lowell, uh, when I went to the original one, I had been studying the site for quite a long time, and he believed uh, the chamber was part of, um, of the observatory, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, in fact, uh, we went uh, we went back there in the, in the winter time, I th I've tr February, I think it is, whatever, whatever the, the line, yeah, it was like, we had Hold to be up there in February. We had to be yeah. there for the, the rise of the sun. Uh -huh. Because what his theory was that um, the Native Americans or whoever inhabited uh, would go into this chamber and they would see projected on the wall, they would see a constellation, I can't remember the name, I think it was the dog constellation. Mm -hmm. um, on the on the wall, which is interesting because you couldn't see it with the naked eye. Oh, but they could. The Native Americans could see it projected on the wall, even though if you were outside looking at the sky, you couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. um, it was like blue lights that that came through. So uh, we went there <laughs> a very cold February. Uh, I believe it was February. And uh, we were there for sunrise, and we waited. And unfortunately, it was a cloudy day, so oh, no. we weren't able to there. So I froze my butt out for nothing, for nothing. basically. Oh uh, well. But it was it, the the theory was it was kind of like the if you saw Raiders of the Lost Ark, you remember the the staff in the chamber when right. the sun came through yeah. and lit up. That that was kind of what it, what it was for. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, it was an interesting chamber. I have to tell you, though, I mean, we did that investigation uh, at night there, and um, it, it was pitch black when we did it. And you've been to the site, right? Yes. So we, had, a map. we had the map, which is, a, can I see this? Yes. Yep. Hope this so. is, you know, you get a cool little map when you uh, go there. You know, and it has all the, see, it's a paint like this. And uh, you don't have to pan in. That's all right. Just a, it's a two-page <laughs> map. All these sites are numbered. All they're numbered on there. It's like a self-score. So the, the interesting thing about it is when we went at night, the first time we were there, right? Mm -hmm. And we went out to investigate, and we tried to follow the map, and we had extreme difficult. And, and, you, and it seemed like the site was so Enormous. big yeah. and so, you know, rambling. Mm -hmm. But it, as you've been up there, it's really not that big no. in, in comparison. I mean, it's very, very close. Mm -hmm. But that night, it seemed so 
so big. Like and, miles long. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, we went to the, the watch house and it, it took us forever. And, and it was one time where I just took the map and said, like, bring the map. I mean, it, we can't find this stupid. And it wasn't that far away. No. It was that, that, that whole right. deception. But I mean, there was a lot of strange things that happened. I mean, uh, Dawn, who was an employee, she stayed with us that night. I mean, she brought up a hot um, thermos of, of coffee for us uh, from the lodge mm -hmm. up to the main site at night. By the time it got up to the top, it was cold. And this was in a thermos. Huh, that's weird. Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of different and strange uh, incidents that night. Dennis, who was a cameraman for AT&T, he was unpacking the equipment and he saw red eyes, what appeared to be red eyes in the, the, the woods. And he looked at them and uh, noted them and then he kind of like would go and grab something else and he left and they were over another place. And then, you know, the same way, it seemed to move almost instantaneously uh -huh. from like all around. Like something was almost stalking you? Stalking us, yes, but the, mm -hmm. the, the interesting thing, it was, it was like, you know, they, they didn't just like run or you didn't hear any noise. And the, and the other thing is like, in order for uh, an animal's eyes to be seen, they need a reflective light or something. And there right. wasn't, no, we did have, he didn't have a light on it. Right. He just saw these in the saw darkness. Saw red eyes. Yeah. That's so. pretty freaky. Yeah. That's, I would be a little disconcerted by that. We, we had a lot of and strange that, incidents. You're literally in the middle of the woods. It is. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, about, oh, we, what else? Somebody else? Oh, the, we went into the oracle chamber, of course, and we had set up a thermometer and everything else. Now, we went in there, and I, I don't know what you guys use for uh, lights now. Do you use lights when you uh, uh, shoot? On well, we have infrared I have like an infrared. Uh, you have infrared, okay. Array. Right. You know? Back then, we did, they didn't have the infrared. They had right. those big lights. Oh. Do you yeah. remember the bright, bright lights? <laughs> you mean you think these studio lights are bad? Probably before my time, but. Yeah. Yeah, they, they were extremely <laughs> bright. So we went into that small chamber, right? Mm -hmm. We had the thermometer there. And I think it was three or four of us. We had the camera and those big lights, okay? And as we're in the chamber, the temperature's going down. So instead of all the heat that we're throwing in it, it should be rising, it was right. actually dropping. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it was an interesting night, uh, the strange things that were going on. We would be sitting around talking because, you know, in, in any type of investigation, there's a lot of waiting and, and there listening. Is. There and, is. And we swore, we swore we heard uh, tom-toms in the woods. Uh, that, that came in very, very clear. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were just talking and all of a sudden, wait a minute, can you hear that? And Sure enough, we actually have a recording of it, of the sound itself, mm -hmm. which is interesting. And they sound like drums. Uh, I use the word tom-toms, but it, they definitely sound like some type of a drum. Don't know if, what does tom-tom mean anyways? That's pretty interesting. I thought tom-tom was a GPS. <laughs> well, in the middle of the woods in February, one would not... Oh, this wasn't in February. This was the original investigation, oh, this was, oh, which was okay. in the fall. Oh, all right. Fall. Yeah. I was going to say... No. I hope no one's out there in the snow banging a drum. No, there was no snow. This so, was a very nighttime investigation. Wow. But that's pretty freaky. Yeah, I mean, it, it's an interesting sight, as, as I mentioned. Uh, the more that we explored it, the, the stranger things happened. Batteries would die on us as we walked around. Mm -hmm. We'd have those big camera batteries, and they would just drain out on us. Yeah, and, and and those this was, huge. This was the ATT yeah, crew, those too. Huge. They had the professional <laughs> batteries. This, Enormous was a, batteries. this wasn't just the studio batteries as well. These, right. This was their, their own professional batteries on it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it was definitely a lot of strange things that, that happened that night. And uh, it's hard to string. I mean, the, we, we investigated. We found, um, and, and I, I know I have the, the interview with Dennis from, I took from that time, mm -hmm. but if you look into the some of the stone you can see like almost wagon wheels being cut into the stone hmm. and these same same type of uh of carvings or whatever it is uh wearing or whatever it is is also found in malta in in there where uh, uh you know here we are in, a, in you know on spain mm -hmm. and uh it's it's very similar to the ones that were found there really we don't know what it was and they right. don't know what it was or what it thing mm -hmm. but there they are carved into the wood so mm. i mean it's a uh people go there they 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 have a lot of people who go to connect uh spiritually with spirit there mm -hmm. and um, it's a very peaceful place yeah uh, definitely they at certain times of the year of course like the 
the equinox and so forth. They have a lot of people who come up and uh, sometimes they bring gifts and sometimes they just try to connect to right. someone who's passed. And so. I mean, that's another thing with the altar too. Who's to know that it was actually a sacrificial altar? Do we well, the really thing was the, the drain was the, the well, key to it. That would yeah. indicate it. Yeah. But right. I mean, sometimes altars uh, are used, food is left. Right. Um, in offerings. Yep. Yeah. Uh, to I wanted to leave Dan there, but he tried. Dan yeah, didn't. He didn't tried. happen. It didn't. Happen. I did put the flowers though, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, okay. yeah. Flowers. Mm -hmm. So that was Ron's offering yeah. to the spirits. But um, we did have another question from chat, um, okay. and Stephen had wondered, do the sounds only travel in one direction at the, uh, the oracle stone? And he said, could the sounds or the sacrifice actually be transmitted to the oracle chamber, similar to uh, divining using death methods? That's an interesting theory. I'm not sure what he means by that as far as, yeah. does it, can, the, the idea, to answer his question, uh, it would probably only go one way because uh, there is, it goes up under the altar. It is not like someone could, um, you'd have to crawl under the altar to speak into the right. tube to go into the chamber. Right. So that really. So it's more of a, necessary. if it was going to work anyway, it would go the, the opposite the way. The other way, yeah. yeah. Some, so. you know, one of the theories is that, that the chiefs or the medicine men would uh, chant during these uh, sacrifices and then someone would speak through the oracle tube as a, a voice of the Probably spirit. almost so like forth. a microphone. It's exactly what it is. You know, it's a megaphone, basically. It's a megaphone. An old fashioned right. megaphone. Right. But uh, it is a, an interesting site and it's, it's definitely worth uh, visiting. It's up in Salem, New Hampshire and uh, I forget their website. I think it's it on there at all. Uh, the website, and mm -hmm. actually we put it up earlier. Oh, was, we did. Okay. Uh, uh, it's StonehengeUSA.com. Okay. And you can get a lot more information from there, and um, you know hours and visiting information. Right. They have a whole. They have a lot of the things that they've excavated. They have a little museum um, there. Mm -hmm. um, they have a. Um, there's a canoe, a dugout canoe. Um, it's a recreation of a real one that mm -hmm. uh, was uh, believed to be 300 years old um, that they found on the site. So there's a lot of things. There's, they're still um, finding things. Yeah, they're still finding things all these years later. Right. But as far as the... There's the 90 degree hole. Oh. Yeah, don't what? ask Ron about the 90 degree hole. All right. right? We're not going to go there. We're not going there? <laughs> we're not going there. Because we're not going there. He's over there with his fingers, and, and I, no, I said, just stop. Stop being such a child. I have no idea. Us? Mess around? Yeah, whatever. So, I know that um, we talked about, so the astronomical um, aspect, um, the viewing platform up there, there are, uh, Stephen Scott had also asked about, um, does it go along the ley lines? And um, I believe according to this, it is all uh, basically seasonal, seasonal alignments. Um, there's an equinox sunset alignment, a moon standstill alignment, uh, winter solstice, February 1st sunset alignment. So it's all aligned with, um, you know, by the, by the seasons, by the months. Um, there are yeah, it's summer solstice, May Day, right. equinox sunrise, November 1st sunrise. So it says uh, that all the, the astronomical alignments are around 1500 BC. Okay. Um, is what it says. And you can here. tell a lot of the, you can see that in, in the tree lines because you can see the new tree growth versus the older tree growth. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you, you could see that they were once cleared at one time. But I, I know we're running out of time, and I actually have a, probably one of the most interesting things that ever happened to me happened there. Uh, around 3 o'clock in the morning, um, Dennis Stone says, uh, there's this place that we have on the, on the hill called the cold spot. And whatever you go, it's always cold. He says, would you like to go? So 3 o'clock in the morning, we decided to, yeah, what the hell, why not? Let's head over there. So <laughs> we, we headed out, and we found the cold spot, and sure enough, it was cold. <laughs> and they 
imagine. Yeah. Imagine that it was cold. Yeah. But the interesting thing about it is that uh, when Brian was there, Brian the monkey says, if you're going to go out in the woods, he says, don't ever go by yourself. Always go in twos because I, I think there's, there's a problem there. So anyways, okay. we headed back to camp after the cold spot and I was leading and I actually ran ahead. I was getting ahead of, of everybody, right? Quite mm -hmm. a bit. And I was just going along and all of a sudden my foot got pulled out from underneath me and I fell flat in my head. Honest to God, just inch, millimeters away from a, a huge rock as I fell. I almost hit my head on this rock. So I tried to get up and I couldn't get up. And I went and I looked, and this is the honest to God's truth. I looked at my sneaker, because I wore sneakers at that time, and there was a root that came out of the ground. They went up from the loop of my sneaker, through the tongue, and through the other loop, and entered the ground. I had to break the root uh, to get up. <laughs> I have, honest to God, I have no idea how that happened or whatever, wow. but it was through the loops of my sneaker and into the ground. They wanted to slow you down. Or something else. <laughs> hmm. Maybe you got another fan on the other side. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Could be. Whatever. But that's one of the most interesting things that, that uh, happened in my life. And uh, That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, as I said, I was by myself until um, I got to the point where I couldn't get up. And then the cameraman who they was behind me you. caught up with me. <laughs> Thank God. And uh, they actually caught the footage of the, me breaking that thing to get my foot out of it. So Wow. Yeah. So that was uh, one of the more interesting things that happened that night. So And, and one of my first... Uh, uh, paranormal experience, I believe, mm -hmm. as well. So. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty exciting. I, I, that, I'd be would it a freak little, you out? Yeah. <laughs> I think that would really freak me out, definitely. Really? Yeah. Hmm. So but, what were your conclusions at, at the end of this night? Hmm. Well, I mean, do you feel that it's haunted? Or is it more... Oh, well, you want me to clear it haunted? Just like know, the, the old well, ghost? Well, no, ghost but it, it, show? is it more of a, a spiritual kind of feeling? Did you feel a little threatened there? It sounds like what happened, some of the things that happened were a little threatening. I, I definitely felt there is some type, something there as well. And, and the interesting thing is, is that um, after the show aired, uh, we had uh, one of the neighbors contacted us. Mm -hmm. And she had a pond in her backyard, and she took pictures of the pond. And then the pond, you can see faces of Indians. Wow. Yeah. In fact, I have those, still have those photos. I'll have to show them to you sometime. Oh, well, that would have been nice to have. Yeah, I just tonight. thought of them now that you mentioned it. Uh, <laughs> so what can I tell you? Well, all I know is that... We may do a follow-up show. Yeah, maybe know, we will. Yeah. All, I, all I know is I was not going to take any rocks home from Stonehenge and right. be seeing no attend. nine foot Indians. No, no, no. Could clean your house for you. No, thank you. you know? I don't want to see any any ten. Indian, nine, can you take my foot? dog out for me for a walk, please? <laughs> take Standing the garbage out while you're at it. So I, I I put that rock right back where I found it. I did. I did take the pen. Then I picked it up and took it home, <laughs> and I have it with me right. You did not. I did too. You did not. I did too. <gasps> Stop. He didn't. I did. No, we did. Did, did, did too. I made did him too. put it back. Did too. <laughs> Chipmunk. <laughs> so, so, do we want to talk a little bit about before we sign off? Because I know we're running out of time. Yep. Do you want to talk about Spirit Quest? Oh yeah, actually, Spirit Quest is um, yeah, it's it's Spirit Quest is coming up. It's uh, September 18th through the 20th. Uh, uh, it's up at the VZ State in Groveland. And this year, we're going to look at. Uh, Ghost hunting and witchcraft, which is going to be really, really neat. Kelly Spangler, uh, Salem Witch, is coming up. She was on the Ghost Adventure show for the, the Witch House. She was, she'll be there. As long as Steve Parsons coming back from the UK, so he'll Excellent. be there as well. Uh, we got some great topics. Uh, we have, uh, I have a replica for, of the uh, Ouija board used in the movie Witchboard. Nice. And we're going nice. to do a Witchboard session, and this oh, is a replica yeah. of the the board that was actually used in the movie. It's a 1982 cult classic. Awesome. Very, one of those right. scary movies. 
<laughs> but we, we have, uh, we'll be doing one on automatic writing and the writing planchette. You'll be doing a talk as well on... I will be on which is Graves. Which is Graves. Appropriately enough. Mm -hmm. You know, throw the Graves out there at you. Yep. Uh, we'll be doing a Blair Witch Ghost Hunt, which we'll be using uh, thermal imaging and other stuff and, and going through trails in the woods. Because uh, now we can see in the dark. That's right. We have infrared. We have thermal <laughs> imaging. We have all those cool things. Uh, we'll be doing a witch's bonfire. There'll be a witch's altar there where you can remember people of the past. Uh, you can leave a message for them. And at the end of uh, Spirit Quest, Kelly's going to read the messages for the spirit. Uh, so that's going to be there. Uh, we have so many really cool things. Uh, what else? Oh, smart ghost hunting. Uh, Steve Parson, we do a talk on um, uh, the old witches of England and Europe, which is going to be awesome. Um, I don't know, we've got so many things going on. Uh, Roxy Zwicker will be there from New England Curiosity. She's going to do a workshop on uh, the rope ladder. Uh, Kelly's going to do a oh, workshop okay. on prosperity. Oh, we could so all use a little you can prosperity. Do a, you'll be able to right. cast a spell for prosper Definitely. Sp prosperity. I think she did that with us here one night. Was it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Last year. Was it? She did a prosperity spell with us. She did? Yes. Oh. She did. But if people want more information. Go to our website. The letter N, the letter E, ghostproject.com. Any ghostproject.com. All right. And if people want more information about your cemetery tripping. Uh, hop on Facebook and go to Cemetery Tripping, and that is my page, and I share all my photographs there. Lots and lots of albums, so uh, could keep you uh, you're awake in the middle of the night and have nothing better to do. <laughs> and, and, and if you have an idea for us, to, for a place to investigate, write us or Facebook us on our Facebook page, which is Ghost Chronicle Next Generation. Right. So, so I think next that's time. it. Yep. For another show, thank you everyone for listening and thank you to those in our chat and we will talk to you all again next week. Good night so, and God bless. Peace and night. light. From goalies to ghosties, long leggedy beasties and things that go bump. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. It's springtime in the forest of the black-tailed deer. The young male is feeling playful. It's time for Tag. The female flicks her ears. Her way of saying, catch me if you can,